In this video, we convert a downloaded ISO file into a bootable Windows installation flash drive using an incredibly straightforward method. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial, we convert a readily available ISO file into a bootable Windows 10 installation USB drive using a simple and free utility. Whilst we advertise this as the easy way, it isn't the easiest, and in most instances, you can create a USB installer by following that option in the Windows Media Creation tool. However, in our recent tutorial, we downloaded a preview version of the Windows 10 Spring 2020 update. In the case of preview downloads, we don't have the option to create installation media, with the onus falling upon us to create the installer from the ISO we downloaded. This tutorial bridges that gap, if you prefer a toolless version, be sure to check out our forthcoming tutorial which uses the command prompt only. And if you're looking for a more fully featured utility, we round out this series with a look at Rufus. We begin by inserting a blank USB drive into our Windows device, and it assumes the drive letter E. Given the size of current Windows installers, we require a minimum capacity of 8GB. In this example, we use a 32GB drive, which is far larger than necessary. We right click on the drive, selecting the option to format, and the format dialog appears. We need to ensure that quick format is selected, and we can optionally rename the drive with a name of our choosing, and here, we arbitrarily label it installer. We click start, which prompts an important warning, reminding us that the content of our USB drive will be entirely overwritten with the installer. This is our last chance to abort and back up any files stored on the drive. Acknowledging the message, we click OK. The drive now begins the formatting process, and quickly completes, after which we again click OK. With our disk formatted, we can further click to close the format dialog. Our USB drive is now blank, formatted and labelled. We now need to download the utility which will convert it into an installer. We head to the link shown on screen now, and as ever linked in the written description accompanying this video. UK users can substitute GB for US in the URL for their localised site, although the difference is minimal. In either event, we scroll down, where we can select from one of nine languages. Clicking the details option again breaks down the available downloads along regional and linguistic lines, and we will select the ENGB option appropriate to our localization. The obvious concern here is that the installers are designed for Windows 7, but they are equally effective with Windows 8 and 10 installations. With UK English set as our language, we click download, taking us to a page where our choice of downloadable files is once again language based. We tick the ENGB installer, although ENUS would be equally acceptable. Clicking next initiates the very small download. Once downloaded, we can view the installer in our downloads folder. We'll now also add our Windows 10 installation ISO. In this instance, we're using the preview version of the Spring 2020 update, which we downloaded in our previous tutorial, and we'll ultimately use the utility we've just downloaded to transfer the data from this ISO to our bootable USB stick. We click to run the installer for the utility, but our system encounters problems which will apply to anyone without the .NET Framework version 2.0 enabled. We therefore need to enable it. If you don't encounter this message, you'll already have the necessary components installed, and can skip ahead to the next section. We return to our desktop, clicking the start button, and typing turn windows features on or off, before pressing either enter, or selecting the option above. The turn windows feature on or off dialog appears, and we click the check mark next to .NET Framework 3.5 includes .NET 2.0 and 3.0, before clicking OK. From the prompt which appears, we select let Windows Update download the files for you, and downloading begins, continuing before the relevant changes are applied. Once completed, we can click to close. Returning to the desktop, we run File Explorer, rerunning the download tool from our downloads folder. This time there's no error at startup, and we can click next to proceed, before clicking install to commence the installation. Once the installation is complete, we click finish. The installation has placed an icon on our desktop. Clicking it prompts the appearance of user account control, and we click yes to provide our consent to advance. With the utility now running, we are four simple steps away from creating our installation media. The first step is to choose an ISO file, and this is simply the ISO we downloaded during our previous tutorial, containing the Windows Preview Edition. We click browse, navigating to that ISO, beginning in our documents folder, and heading to downloads where the file is located. We select the downloaded ISO and click open. 
The path to the downloaded ISO is now shown as our source file, and we click next to advance to step 2. Here we choose between creating a bootable USB installer or DVD. With fewer optical drives and disk based installations, we select USB device. At this point, we are invited to physically insert the USB media. As we've done this already, our USB stick is detected and we simply click begin copying. We are advised that all data will be erased from the USB stick, so we click erase USB device in acknowledgement. Given the potential data loss from entirely erasing the device, we are specifically required to click yes to confirm. File operations are now performed, including formatting and copying files, and this is the longest phase of the operation, so you may wish to take a break until completion. Once complete, we can click to close the utility. We now head to File Explorer, where clicking our ReDrive reveals that it's now a bootable USB installer disk. We can click to run the setup utility, or set the compute to clean boot it from BIOS. We can then eject the USB stick, and use it to upgrade or perform a clean installation upon as many machines as we wish. Be sure to check out our back catalogue and subscribe for future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.